but they were also invited to provide information in the form of time capsules which were buried, chambers which were buried, and um, information that was on the surface as well. This is um, going back, I should have mentioned, if you have a look at the size of this building here, which is the support boys handling building, and then we move along. This is the same building here to give you a size of the scale. I apologize for the, um, for the poor quality of that image, but that's uh, an earthworks designed by John Lombard. Uh, and they agreed that the trap oil should be one of the features. And Sagan also suggested that the skull and crossbones would be an appropriate symbol to incorporate onto, um, onto the surface features as well as more detailed symbolic representations which were presented in this, for example, which was a, a granite monolith, no less. And um, as you see, was consulted um, Contents of the Voyager record, and I'd be surprised if he wasn't also um, in also inform the design of um, of the monoliths, which were describing information about this particular site, which ranged from basically stay away to more detailed scientific information. Um, that's an, a chart showing symbols um, which were paired. On the left hand side you see the radiation symbol and a, and a, a representation of the of the um, of the atom of, of and the radiation um, orbits and the notion was that by showing equivalence in a mathematical sense using symbols on the right hand side a kind of rationale logic that these pairings of symbols could be established at a very rudimentary level and then applied to more complicated um, um, depictions, and they were very fond of using pictographs, um, which were also incorporated on the Voyager record. So, on this particular image, which is part of a sequence device by uh, John Longberg, the, the passage of deep time was represented by the constellation, which is shown from a long range uh, perspective here, uh, with again that um, central building and um, Closer up with the monolith with people uh, in, in the 2030 AD examining more detailed scientific information. And during the sequence of, um, of this pictograph, of these pictographs, the constellation changes. And the, the notion is that the recipients of these messages in the future would have astronomical knowledge or knowledge about the stars and their shifting over vast epochs of time be able to calculate and gather information about the, the duration for a particular sequence and when uh, this site would be safe for people to, um, to um, explore. Um, I suppose the epitome of, uh, of scientific information, of complex scientific, uh, complex scientific diagram, was, um, was the periodic table. With circles around the types of waste which were buried and again the degree of redundancy in, in the messages uh, and these lead to a larger map showing uh, where on the wick site um, the radioactive wastes are buried. So this was considered to be um, um, legible even if there was a paradigmatic, sh paradigmatic shift within 500 years. The, uh, Lomberg and Drake and Sagan argued that science historians and other academic specialists would still be likely to understand the periodic table in 500 years, in 5,000 years, in 10,000 years time. They argued that, the, that for a very British account of um, the inexorable advancement of science and assumptions regarding the universality and the ahistoricity of scientific facts for Sagan and the others that were involved in making these expert judgments. Uh, there's, there's nothing contingent here to move along with this. Um, when asked to evaluate and put a probability value on the legibility of the symbol systems or the communication system, the market system they developed, um, this was uh, what they came up with. In between two and 10,000 years time, they said that assuming that human society continues to ascend the ladder of science and technology, 
um, as it has in the past 10,000 years, this is domestication of plants and animals. There's a high probability the scientific diagrams will be correctly interpreted. So that was TV, but longer than the same group of members of Sandy and were keen to attach probabilities to, to, to the uh, estimations on the part of the, of the, uh, the panel members. And so they assigned um, um, somebody to work with them. One was an employee of Sandia, and another was somebody uh, an expert in statistics. And they managed to tease out of the team, with some reluctance on the part of Lombard and his colleagues, a, a percentage of, for example, the durability of the architectural structures and the monoliths. But they also had provided percentages of the likelihood that the recipients would be able to comprehend these messages. Um, and I found quite surprising that after 10,000 years, um, they sorted into three levels the recipients. Those who were part of um, a, a high technology um, culture, a low te a medium technology, and a low, low technology culture. Um, and scientists were considered to be the integral component of the high technology culture, and they were they would believe to have a 99% chance of understanding in its completeness, the periodic table as well as the more simple um, um, depictions and symbolic representations of, of danger and toxicity on these, in, in, these, um, in these market systems. And working our way down from the medium and, and low technology cultures in the future, a medium culture, a medium technology culture would a 95% chance they would understand, and even in a low technology culture, there's a 45% chance. Um, and then in the future, moving on to the notion of um, deep time, one of the messages or one of the pictures on the Voyager record is this representation by John Longberg. Um, um, first image shows the primordial content, the continent. Three, three billion years ago, the middle one is um, is um, the present day, four point five billion years old, with the silhouette of the hand, uh, humankind who actually was present at the time that this was at the Voyager when the Voyager um, probe and message was launched, and then they all how Earth the continents will look in, in uh, ten million years into the future. So, um, geologist James Hutton in the eighteenth century introduced the term. Um, to, as, as an attempt to understand human life on geological time scales. And so the notion of deep time was refashioned by people like the physicist and science fiction author uh, Gregory Bentham. Um, and deep time is also incorporated in the notion of uh, cosmic evolution, which incorporates biological evolution, the evolution of physical matter, and the evolution of, uh, at the scale of civilizations as well. And also the evolution of technologies, nuclear technologies. Um, Sagan and his colleagues were critical of nuclear weapons, but they were less um, vocal in their criticism of, of nuclear energy systems, partly because they thought there would be an unfolding of technologies, of which nuclear technology, as well as the point has pointed out, constitutes, um, they, they describe it in, in some instances as, um, as the threshold at which humankind could either self-annihilate or go on to um, a, a more rich and complex and unfolding future in which um, technology continued to grow and would be um, compatible with other advanced civilizations which could plug into the condition at which um, Earth technology developed because there's a teleological aspect of the development of technology which is defined partly by the physical structure of the environment, the universe, and the human habit. So, C.J. Gould was perhaps um, um, more cautious with regards to uh, the notion of deep time. He suggested that the human mind may not have evolved enough to comprehend deep time, and that it may only be able to measure it. An abstract intellectual understanding of deep 